Alright, we're back. Again. Kill the homos! Oh, he's gonna hit me until daddy loves him. <laughs> I really don't want to know the meaning behind that. <laughs> if killing and eating you is wrong, then I don't want to be right. <laughs> Pretty sure that was a plot for a movie. <laughs> Not gonna kill him good. Why is that good? Because I wanted to get an overkill. Boom, exploding hobo. Yes. Almost got Gabe up to maximum overkill bonus for his second weapon. Shiny? Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's not much in this game. In the second game, it gives you, like, plus five damage per overkill bonus. But, um, in this one, it's just, it's an extra 15 points of damage, so it helps. Well, that's fair enough. That wimple fella send you, you're dead meat. As a matter of fact, now that you mention yeah. it... Apparently you're interrupting his experiments. Oh yeah, yeah. Can't have By that. Being on everything. <laughs> As hobos I want to do. <laughs> Makes you wonder though, what has he found out so far? <laughs> like what are the results? <laughs> all of this research he's been doing? <laughs> it's a very good question. Uh, apparently it's he's leading gonna... Apparently it's leading up to a uh, robot peeing in our time, of its own free will at that. I've not been doing that since we started. No. <laughs> Pretty sure they've been peeing on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I just... Well, like, on the one hand, either he's discovered that peeing on stuff does nothing, Oh, or... oh! Yeah! Oh, wow, okay. Instant death. The sad part is that will probably be the only time that will come up this entire playthrough. <laughs> wasted. Came up. Wasted on a few hobos. I don't know, I don't think anything can be wasted on hobos. <laughs> <laughs> you may be right there. You may be right there. Like, they even make the most out of a newspaper. This is true. They really do. You do have to hand it to hobos. They can take almost anything and find a use for it. Mostly because they have to. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Necessity is the mother of invention. Mm-hmm. Then again, lots of things are apparently the mother of invention. So it's boredom, apparently. <laughs> It glitched again! I didn't even get a chance to block that! Son of a bitch. And it hurt him and I lost my massive damage bonus that I had on that. Fuck. Oh, uh, well, you'll just have to beat him in the face some more. <laughs> just a little bit more. Not too much. <coughs> Excuse me. Is it possible to not beat someone up too much? Mm. Like, just by the definition of beating someone in the face, can you really do it just enough? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> it depends on what your, what the goal of your just enough is. Are you trying to beat them just to where they're on the point of death, or are you trying to beat them straight to death? Because just enough would be actually, like, waiting until you until you've seen that they're dead and then you just stop right there you don't go any further that's true why do Wait, i get the 
Now, <laughs> that's funny because I was just about to be like, why do I get the feeling that you're now thinking of an experiment on that? <laughs> well, I was wondering if it would be like measurable. <laughs> but of course, that would require us defining the point of death. You know, when they, we you know, not when. Managed to do. Eh, I mean, kind of. No, like, no, like, legitimately, there is no single point at which you can definitively say they are dead because we've been proven wrong in the past. True, true. People have people have been pronounced dead and we and woken up like a few days later. Well, yeah, like until the 1860s, I think there was no established method of proving if someone was dead. I'd like, like to I'd like to point so out people were buried little coffins with bells. So that yeah, they could ring the bell and the gravekeeper could yeah. dig them up before they suffocate to death. Yeah. Exactly. I'd like I'd like to point out this hobo here. He's a cowboy hobo. He is currently peeing. Ah, wonderful. Yes. Let's let's just interrupt that. <laughs> For all our sakes. Yeah, let, let's have a let's have a closer look at the peeing hobo. <laughs> Toddy! Toddy! You do know what uh, hot toddy means in England, right? No, a Molotov cocktail. No, a um, toddy is like. 20s English slang for a prostitute. Oh, really? So a hot totty is an attractive prostitute. Makes sense. Makes sense. It's also uh, slang for tea and rum. <laughs> Which, for some reason, the Irish never really cook to. They'll have Irish coffee, but they won't have Irish tea. Weird. Alright. Bam! Ooh, exploding hobo. I think in this one, we'll go to the boss, and then end it off there. Fair enough. I wonder how many exploding hobos we can cause along the way. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> Makes you wonder though. Like, I just had this weird mental image of walking down the street and as you walk past, hobos just going off like fireworks. Around <laughs> you. Like, as you get up to them in that really cinematic kind of way. But the head just pops off and there's a fountain of blood. <laughs> I have a weird mind. It's okay, Hugh. We've all known you were a psychopath. Sociopath. I'm very picky about that. <laughs> Shoe of ass. Which the funny thing with that, I, I've been watching a lot of uh, Sherlock with the Benedict Cumberbatch version. Oh, yes. And it actually somewhat pisses me off when that how much they focus on him knowing he's a psycho, he's a sociopath, and like actually correcting people like he's proud of it because that wouldn't be Sherlock. That wouldn't be something Sherlock Holmes would give a shit about. He would just well, be. A, he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be updated to the modern ideals of what Sherlock would have been if he were alive today. But I mean, the original Sherlock didn't give a crap because even if he did tell people, no one would understand what he meant anyway. Well, so he just dosed himself up to the eyeballs on heroin. Well, it's not even it's not even that so much. It's just that Sherlock Holmes wouldn't focus so much on that because it's unimportant. It's it's just he's not mentally ill. It's just him. He's Sherlock. No, I think and, modern and, Sherlock, and that's... it's not so much that he's fixating on what he is, it's that he's fixating on being accurate. Maybe? Because like, he's always correcting other people, but more that they got it wrong rather than 
being proud of what he is. It's more along the lines of, ha, you're wrong, I'm right. Yeah. Which, to be perfectly frank, I can sympathize with. That I can understand, yeah. I'm just gonna use up this dynamite here. Don't mind me, hobos! Oh well, of course. <laughs> I mean that. That I mean well, yeah. that. That we knew. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, in that regard, everything he gets right and they get wrong is another sign that he's better. Yeah. Which he kind of enjoys, because. Because he is. Sociopaths tend to be a bit of a knob like that. <laughs> like, I am sociopathic, but I won't deny I do feel kind of, like, ha, huh, I am superior whenever I do get something right. <laughs> and when you see, and when you see, you know, the population in general doing something fuck all stupid. Oh, to be honest, that just irritates me because they don't <laughs> realize it's stupid and therefore <laughs> there's no ha ha, you're wrong moment. Yeah. Where like, it's only fun if they know they've made a mistake. Where the fuck are these last couple of hobos? I'm missing like three of them. Hobos do. Hiding. Yeah, I'm missing like three hobos. <laughs> just wandering down the street. Hi, I'm looking for three hobos. Three specific hobos. I didn't just wake up the craving. Hmm, <laughs> <laughs> I think today I'll have some hobo for lunch, and then uh, for dinner I will uh, also have some hobo. <laughs> hobo on toast oh. for breakfast. There hobo they are. Beans for lunch. <laughs> And a bit of braised hobo in the evening. <laughs> and perhaps a fillet of hobo for the dog. Where? <laughs> fillet o a hobo. <laughs> Omelette du fromage. Not a fan of cheese omelets, actually. I like cheese omelets. Cheese and ham omelets. Like Bacon and mushroom on They're my standing favorite. Yeah. Simply because they take like 10 minutes to make. <laughs> and I'm lazy that way. Ha, <laughs> cooking? I can make an omelet and get everything I need anyway. If, for me, I enjoy cooking, but I prefer to actually plan it. Like, I can't just one day take an hour to cook. I. I can't take an hour to just cook something big and really, really wonderful. No, I've actually got to plan it out. Like, today I'm going to do this, and it's going to be fucking awesome. I enjoy the act of cooking. I just don't enjoy the fact that I have to put time aside for it. <laughs> so, ah, oh yes, I will cook myself, I don't know, some pork sirloins or something. And yeah, that's great. I like the pork sirloins, and I actually enjoy the act of cooking, but that period of waiting where you're like, okay, I'll put it on to simmer for ten minutes, and then you go and sit down, <laughs> and then I always go and do something that distracts me, and I completely forget about it, and I end up wasting it, and it drives me up the wall. That's why I set timers that are really close to me. Because I, I will go somewhere or, I will go somewhere well, else I'm as well, so... I'm just so incredibly absent-minded. <laughs> so, ah oh, yes, puts the thing on to simmer, goes to set the timer, gets distracted by something eye-catching, completely forgets to set a timer. <laughs> well, that was a waste. And then I get really annoyed and, like, boycott cooking, cooking for the next week. <laughs> no, I refuse to cook because I made a mistake. Understandable. Which, I mean, Beck finds it hell where there is. Fucking hobo and your partial block bullshit. I almost filled up Tycho's um, overkill bonus and he partial blocked the overkill. Tycho's are remarkably good at fighting and I'm going to assume that's vomiting. Yes, that is vomiting as well. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And that Just is what we've always all the wanted. hobos. Hobocide! Uh I met a guy a while ago who called it street art. Oh, what, vomiting? Hobos vomiting on the pavement. <laughs> okay, then. he was a very strange elderly man with one wonky eye. <laughs> oh, hello! Hello! We I have... Like that one, actually. 
we have directed the hobos elsewhere. They now pee on Satan's flowers. <laughs> I assume he has flowers. Or, at any rate, less yellow ones, was that? Yeah, yellow ones. Yeah. Indeed. Wonderful. Indeed. Then payment is in order. Gather round, gather round. I'm not sure we want this. Makes a great show of excavating his pockets. With obvious delight, and before you can recoil, he deposits a bizarre punch card. Okay. With an angry monkey on it. A crumpled ticket. And a wad of lint. Thank you. Um, I think. Believe it or not, there are actually several things in this game, like the phonograph horn and the punch card, that are actually preludes to support characters in the second game. Hmm. All right then, an yeah. angry monkey on a time card. You'll see. What is this card about exactly? Yes, the promised card. Of course, my days beside the ring are long over. Not much good to non-scientists, I suppose. A curiosity at best. Perhaps, perhaps I've said too much. Tell me about this awesome ticket you gave us. That ticket will grant one family access to the Pelican Bay boardwalk. You this should be fun. You don't need it? Sadly, I am no longer allowed in the venue. My attempts to why. research the Sin Wheel have not been especially well received. This is... Lint? Yes, unfortunately. That was an accident. You may keep it, however. <laughs> hey, thanks for all that stuff. I could see Gabe being passed off as the child of the family. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's different. Your line. Oh, what now? Did everyone else see that? I saw that. If by that you mean those shining golden locks. Man, what is his regimen? I'm not discussing his goddamn coiffure. I'm talking about his overall shifty demeanor and fashionable hobo tote. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's weird or whatever. We should follow this trail of dangerous snarling hobos. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like fun. I mean, what day wouldn't be complete without it? Especially <laughs> snarling hobos. Has to be snarling ones. Can't just be normal hobos. So I have to point out what the hobo was saying before we started this fight. He was saying, Don't interrupt me while I'm touching myself. Wow, we've come at just the right time. <laughs> the perfect time. I mean, good god. We really do seem to have fantastic timing so far, don't we? I know! <laughs> well, that was surprisingly ineffective. It's more for stunning him. Ah. And then you beat him with a rake. And then shoot him. As one does. Mm-hmm. Somehow I would have gotten the impression that the shooting would come before the beating with the rake. No, 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 no. You know, no. like, you shoot him, and then you go up to his body, and then beat his head in with a rake just to make sure. No, 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 no. In this case, we beat him to death with a rake, and then shoot him in the head to make sure. Well, considering, yes, infinite bullets, the first time they said. <laughs> oh, yeah, can attack. Aha! Guns down in his, uh... I would say prime, but I get the feeling that's wrong. <laughs> yeah, not not quite his prime. That slumlord always has a big sack with him. And the sack's always mumbling. I saw that slumlord and fellow wandering into the shithole apartments. Sorry, you don't uh, find the mumbling sack suspicious. <laughs> like, in the slightest. Okay, this is Hobo Alley, and they have giant footprints where buildings used to be. Well, yeah, but at least they are shifty about that. 
That they don't even hide the mumbling sack. <laughs> well, that no, and we this is mumbled. this is also the mostly perfect burg of New Arcadia. You know, the one where we I just. I wonder what the thoroughly imperfect burg of New Arcadia would look. Like. <laughs> Probably a lot less evil. I don't know. It depends on how you look at it. This is true, this is true. Really nice and pretty with like flowers and white picket fences and stuff. Actually, you know, that does seem like a vision of hell. <laughs> Fucking suburbia! <laughs> we don't have like that kind of image of suburbia here in England. Here we've got terraced houses with tiny little back gardens and horrible messed up front gardens. With mm -hmm. cars parked on the pavement everywhere. That's like your typical image of suburbs here in England. Really? Yeah. That's that's actually pretty unique. What's really unfortunate though is that the people who live there are really proud of like their little patch, their front garden, their house. They're just insanely proud of it. So like, yes, mine is perfect. So you don't have we have a different version of suburbia. Yours seems to be more of what our version of uh, redneck lawns is. <laughs> well, we don't have the space to have like actual redneck areas. Yeah, no, Either I know. You live in a city, you live in the suburbs, or you live in a village. Everywhere else is taken. Yeah, it's it's you can't really go out into the forest somewhere. Unfortunately, not because all the forests are planted in grids. Yeah, they look ridiculous throws people off massively when they come here, actually. It was quite hilarious. <laughs> I saw a, um, a, I think they were from Northern Europe, a tourist anyway, and their family had come to Thetford Forest, which is quite near my house, and everything was planted in rows, and there's no undergrowth. It's just trees and grass. <laughs> They're so recently planted, and they were walking around like, there's something wrong with this forest, but I don't know what. <laughs> And it does give you this really weird feeling of unease that something isn't right, that this is not how forests are supposed to be, but it's so <laughs> subtle it takes you a while to work it out. Yeah. You know, I've lived in a city, I've lived in a village, and I've lived in a suburb. In the end, I prefer the village. I think I would... I much prefer large towns rather than actual cities because I like the town to be large enough that there's things to do but I don't want it to be an actual city city well I mean that's the advantage of so, living in England I am 20 minutes away from every major city in a 10 mile radius well even so I just I can't fucking stand going into cities like Every single time I've ever gone into a city, I have nearly crashed and died. <laughs> That's what trains are for. <laughs> like, legitimately, I can walk out of my house, it takes me 15 minutes to get to the station, 20 minutes to get to Norwich, which is the biggest city in my county, mm -hmm. and I'm aware that England uses the word county differently to America, but I'm yeah. going to try and explain that because it makes my head hurt. It's It's fine, it's fine. Legitimately trying to work out your structuring system is insane. It is. Oh but, no, I, I completely I completely agree with you. But yeah, I can get a train to Norwich. It takes me twenty minutes, and I'm right in the center. I can go anywhere. There's everything I need in walking distance. Yeah. And then I take the train back, and yeah, it's just so convenient for me. But I get to live in a little town in the countryside, so I've got like fields and crap all around, and I don't have to deal with rush hour and stuff like that. Yeah.